if you are from bangalore then you would be watching this video stuck in traffic or if you are in home then you have ptsd of you being in traffic but construction of new metro line is going on right yes but yellow line is launching since three years Although we have 77 km of metro line which is second largest in India, after full construction, Bangalore metro would be having 222.2 km. If you want to know more on Bangalore metro, just comment down, I will make a video. There we go to this project, but I will add another project for you guys to wait upon. Welcome to RN Explorers and in this video, let's explore Bangalore Suburban Rail project. In short, as name suggests, this is a suburban rail project which is built by K-Ride that is Karnataka Rail Infrastructure Development Company like any other suburban rail project. This will also use broad gauge with 25 kV overhead electric traction just like Indian Railways and all routes would have parallel tracks with operational speed of 35 km per hour and maximum speed of 90 km per hour just like Nama Metro. But Bangalore suburban rail project should have been constructed long back just like Kolkata, Chennai or Mumbai right but why it wasn't made and all of a sudden how will Indian Railways or SWR Southwestern Railways will manage this to answer this question we need to know history of Bangalore and existing transportation systems in Bangalore Bangalore's background in 1900s Bangalore was a peaceful garden city characterized by tree lined avenues well-planned residential areas and abundant green spaces and lakes as well as city as maintained population of 1.6 lakhs in early 1900s and it grew to 30 lakhs in 1990s and then it grew to 60 lakhs by 2001 because of high tea boom and now in 2025 uh, bangalore has around 1.3 crore as population uh, where in 1990s chennai had 50 lakh people mumbai had 1.2 crore people kolkata had 1 crore people this population made them build suburban rail project and also they had larger land areas and in late 1990s due to it revolution which created an interesting pattern of urban crawl notably concentrated in southern and eastern sectors creating india's silicon valley this led to the population surge coupled with rising household incomes as increased private vehicle ownerships coming to infrastructure limitations most major roads remain four lane or narrower the core area features complex firearm junctions that impede traffic flow Average peak car traffic speeds have reduced to just 12 km and volume to capacity ratio is always exceed 1 on major roads. This impacts quality of life in Bangalore like average Bangalorean spends 10 long days sitting in traffic per year and AQI level is always going up due to vehicle war emissions. Due to this, economic productivity suffers from extended commute lines and the cost of goods and services has increased due to transportation inefficiencies. As we know Bangalore's background, let's know the existing transportation infrastructure. As of 2025, Bangalore is spread over 1306 square kilometer and still expanding. Bangalore road system follows radial pattern converging in the city center with total network length over 3000 km it also have direct road connectivity to mumbai chennai mangalore hyderabad and other cities coming to current public transportation infrastructure and bus transport bmtc with daily ridership of 36 to 40 lakhs passengers and have 578 city routes and 1700 suburban routes with coverage radius of 40.4 km with service area of 5100 square km and coming to nama metro which has 9 lakh daily ridership and it has two lines purple and green with 77 km and many more lines are still under construction coming to regional rail connectivity it has direct connectivity to major cities like chennai mumbai pune mysore delhi and all and we all know Bangalore's airport which is out of the city and heavily relies on road transport. The only public transport that is available is BMTC's Vayu Vajra which is an AC bus and rest all people depend on their private cars or on taxis. Let's go through the important stats of Bangalore like employment dynamics. In 2018 we had 51.6 lakh people working and 
It is projected that in 2041, 94.4 lakh people would be working and the percentage of population would be 43-44%. to 44%. And in the education sector, in 2018, 26.6 lakh people would be studying and in 2041, 48.4 lakh people would be studying. Coming to travel behavior analysis like model share, Ola and Uber has 1.1%. Auto as 0.5%, walk as 2.4%, company cab or bus is 6%, metro is just 4.2%, bus is 12% and car is 18% and motor and scooter is 55% and average trip length made by each mode is motor or scooter is 9 km, car is 11.2 km, bus is 12 km, company bus or cab is 20 km, walk is 2 km, auto is 8 km and Ola or Uber is 11 km. So with these backgrounds, let's know the corridor alignment. The Bangalore Suburban Rail project consists of four corridors totaling 148.17 km with a mix of elevated and grade sections. Corridor number 1, Sampike Line from KSR Bengaluru to Devanahalli which has 41.4 km length and the structure is 18.9 km would be elevated and 22.42 km would be at grade and totally it would have 15 stations with 8 elevated, 7 at grade and 1 future station. The key stations include KSR Bengaluru uh, which would have interchange with corridor number 3 and next key station is Ashwantpur, which would have interchange with corridor number 2 along with Lotte Gulda Halli. And Yela Anka, this station would have interchange with corridor number 4 and Devanali would be terminal station with connection to airport area. And the significance of this corridor is this corridor provides crucial connectivity from city center majestic to airport and this is at highest priority. Coming to corridor number 2 which is Malige line. It will start from Bipnerli and end at Chikbanawara. The length of this is 25 km with 13 km would be elevated and 12 km would be at grade and it would have around 14 stations, 6 elevated, 8 at grade and 1 future station. The key stations would be Bipnerli as it is a terminal, uh, Banaswadi, Hebbal, and Eshwantpura and Lotte Gulali because it has interchange with corridor number 1 and Chikbanawara. This is at second priority because it connects east to west through northern parts of the city. Coming to corridor number 3 from Parijata line, this is Kengeri to Whitefield. This has length of 35.52 km. The structure is Kengeri to Bengaluru cantonment is 18 km and then connecting to Whitefield via quadrapple section. Key stations include Kengeri. and KSR Bengaluru and Cantonment by Penali and Whitefield. This corridor is very important because it connects major technology hubs from east to west across the city. And coming to the fourth corridor which is Kanaka line and this connects Ila Lige to Rajan Kunte with the length of 46.24 km and the structure would be 13 km elevated and 32 km at grade. It would have 19 stations, 4 elevated and 15 at grade including 2 future stations. And the key stations would be Ilalige, Karmelaram, Martha Halli, Benigina Halli interchange, Channa Sandra and Yelanka because it has interchange with corridor number 1 and finally Rajan Kunte and the significance is this is the longest corridor and this connects north to south along the eastern parts of city which is a major tech hub coming to station design and intermodal integration stations are designed to connect with metro buses and other transportation modes and this would have disabled friendly design with ramps and lifts and automated fare collection just like metro and sustainable design practices the construction approach is uh, construction is planned in phases to minimize operational constraints at Indian Railways and most of the corridors runs parallelly to Indian Railways. Coming to the conclusion, the suburban rail project represents crucial intervention in Bangalore's urban transport 
and with the city's population reaching 2.15 crore by 2041 and employment nearly doubling to 94.4 lakh and the system's projected daily ridership is 17.6 lakh passengers by 2041 will significantly pressurize on existing transportation infrastructure and the project's integration with existing metro bus and indian railways coupled with strategic corridor placement will make bangalore city more connected and i guess we still can expand these corridors and if you want to know more on like how we can expand i will make another video just comment down and if you want to know mango suburban rail project you can just click somewhere here and yes that's it that's it for video bye bye